fresh economic data showing that Chinese exports to the U.S. dropped 1.1 percent in November from a year ago, declining for the fourth month in a row. Now, this coming as the Reuters is reporting that President Trump says American negotiators are, quote, doing well with China in regards to the current trade talks. Joining us now is D.R. Barton. He's the chief technical strategist at Money Map Press. And D.R., when you take a look at or hear what President Trump is saying, it's a back and forth each day, whether or not he's saying that we're close to a deal or there's no pressure for a deal. How is the market interpreting all of this? Well, it's really interesting. The market keeps making a move on every tweet out of Washington or every statement out of Beijing. But it's interesting that over time, especially if we compare back to uh, late this summer or October swoons, how the drops have become smaller and smaller. I think the market doesn't have it completely priced in, but has a pretty strong inkling that we're going to get something done about these tariffs uh, before this weekend's deadline, that being either some form of, a, of an intermediate phase one kind of deal or somewhat of an assurance that we're getting to that deal and that the U.S. will delay the tariff imposition until, uh, until a later date. Either of those, I think, would be a very positive, give us a very positive reaction uh, for markets um, whenever it happens, if it happens at the end of this week or over the weekend into, uh, in, and we get a Monday pop. So I think those are the things that the market's really looking for right now. Uh, Dear, another thing that the market has been focusing on, aside from trade, was that jobs report that we got out on Friday. It was a very, very strong jobs report. When you take into account 266,000 jobs added to the U.S. economy, is it fair to say that maybe the recession fears are off the table at this point? I think any near-term recession fears uh, certainly are, Sean. I think, you know, one of the big things I think that's important for this week with the Fed, uh, with the Fed starting to meet tomorrow and making their announcement, uh, their December announcement on Wednesday, is uh, that we got that big bump in, in employment numbers that we weren't expecting, bigger than most folks were expecting. Uh, wage growth was up just a titch, not much, just a little bit. And I think those two, lots more jobs, not much wage growth, shows that there's not a lot of inflationary pressure or even the inflationary pressure that the Fed would like to see. We're still below their target rate. And I think that bodes well for dovish monetary monetary policy for the future. There's no real reason to raise rates at all. So, um, so with the Fed being supportive, um, adding liquidity to the market, uh, jobs numbers strong, other, other, some other numbers we've seen that are at least moderate to good, I don't see a, a recession uh, being even in the picture in the first three quarters of next year at minimum, probably throughout the whole year. So, then, Dear, is it fair to say that you expect to see higher growth, economic growth in 2020? Well, I believe we're set up for that, especially, Sean, in the first half. You know, the, my crystal ball gets a little fuzzy when I move out more than uh, 9 or 12 <laughs> months. But, um, but I think that the recessionary fears are very premature um, right now based on everything else that's happening so well. For the economy to be doing as well as it is in the, in the uncertain, we'll say, and the negative uh, is probably a better word, trade atmosphere we have with China and some of the problems we've had between Europe and still not getting the, uh, still not getting the deal done here in North America signed. I think with that overhang in the market, to do and markets and economy to do as well as they have is a very positive sign that doesn't show me any reason to be trying to find a recession next year. I'm I'm uh, I'm pretty bullish on no recession for 2020. I like that outlook. Dr. Thanks so much for joining me. Hey investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.